Before I begin, I just want to say uh, thank you, Al, for those words. All I want in my life, so well presented, all I want in my life is, well, in my ministry, and, and the biggest part of my life is for people to know Jesus. Because when I found him, it was the most incredible, life-changing thing in the whole world, and I've and privileged to have dedicated my life to it. And, and, and so for you to say that that is what you have seen in me is humbling and delightful, and thank you for that. I appreciate it. Well, now let's talk about something stupid. Um, <laughs> 1984, Christmas morning, little tiny Alton Ruff by the aluminum Christmas tree unwraps a present that would change his life forever. And I have it here. If you're watching online, you probably can't see me now. There's a big box. Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime was under the tree. And if you've been to my office, and if you haven't been, you should come visit me in my office. I have cabinets filled with Transformers. It awakened the collector in me. I wasn't the kind of kid that threw all of his toys into a bin and and forgot about them, was the kind of kid who made sure they were all lined up and nice and clean and neat and tidy. My parents are here so they can confirm or deny that, uh, whether that's true. And so I I, I know I have this collector spirit. A few years ago, uh, another Christmas, my, my wife put this in my stocking. I don't know, can any of you, do you know what this is? It's the Homer Simpson designed car. There's an episode where he designs a car for his brother Herb. <laughs> and, uh, and I pulled it out and I looked at that and I thought, huh, I hope that doesn't awaken something in me. <laughs> so if you go in my office, look on the wall. There's about 40 Hot Wheel cars, mostly pop culture stuff. Uh, a, f- a few years before that, I just picked up a little Stormtrooper. Next thing you know, there was four more and Darth Vader, and Luke in his many iterations. And so I've got a bunch of these. Actually, yesterday I was honored to lay Trevor Lease to rest, to commit his body to the ground and his soul to the Lord. As we did so, I'd asked permission ahead of time from Colleen, but I, I stopped by my office on the way to the cemetery, and I picked up one of these guys and told them that he would look after Trevor but don't worry, they never hit anything, so he's not dangerous. <laughs> it's true, right? Stormtroopers never hit anything. So a couple months ago, you know, we still can't do, we're not in lockdown, but you can't do a whole lot. So I thought, you know, one of the things I loved when I was a kid was RC cars. I had a turbo hopper back in the 80s. I loved it. Why don't I get one for Paxton? He's, he's five, he's at a good age, so I did. I bought one, and then I, I had to buy one for me. And then, I, and then, you know, and then Sam came back, and I'm like, well, I guess we need a third one, right? So, so next thing I know, I've got all these different RC cars on my hands. I don't know if uh, we can get this one to, to work or not. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there we go. Do you want to see you jump off the stage? Yeah? All right, let's see. See if we can go down the stairs. Whoop. Got to turn down the speed on this guy. There we go. Hey! Oh, don't, don't hit the 100-year-old baptismal font. That is sacrilegious. So this is how we're going to collect the offering from now on. All right? We're just going to put it on wheelie here and... I don't know, there's just, there's just something in me. Why do I collect all this stuff? And people have asked me over the years because actually the newspaper interviewed me a number of years back about it, not about my, my charitable work or, you know, my, my uh, work with people who, who need uh, pastoral care or strengthening of their faith, but they want to know about my toy collecting. Why do you do it? And I said, look, it, I'll go into a hospital room 
and the family will be gathered around somebody, and we all know that the end is coming in the next hours or days or weeks. And they're looking to me for at least a few minutes of comfort and care and direction. And, and in that moment, I represent God to them. What does God say in this tender moment? And then I leave that room and take a deep breath, whisper a prayer of strength for the family, and then I go home and I race cars around the backyard. It's just a distraction. It makes me feel good. It's dumb and it's stupid and it takes all of my money and I love it. But there's a problem. There is a problem when things like this get out of hand, right? Now for you, it's probably not this stuff. For you, it could be something else. Uh, Some people don't have hobbies. I've never quite understood that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I just don't get it. I enjoy them too much. But there's a problem when our hobbies or the physical things in our lives consume our thoughts and our attention or our finances to an unhealthy degree. If you find yourself spending a little more time online shopping than maybe you should, Or you get that credit card bill and you go, I don't remember that last $300 worth of purchases. Then maybe, maybe it's a little much. Or if you spend just all of your time thinking about how you can buy your dream house. What it will take to get to that place in your life. Or perhaps it's just planning the perfect wedding. It's it's all you think about. It's all you talk about. You see, for a lot of us, after a while, you might have this kind of thought creep into your head, and that thought is, if I only had, dot, dot, dot. Now, for me, it's plastic, electronics, what have you. For you, it might be something else. And I would bet for each of us, there's that one thing. For my dad, I think it's power tools. You should see his shop. If anyone broke in, they would have a treasure load on their hands from his garage. It's that thought in your head. If I only had, I would be happy. But the truth is, you won't be. You won't be. Because idolatry will never make you happy. Wait, what did he just say? Did he just say that my shoe shopping addiction is idolatry? That sounds pretty drastic. And maybe for some of us, we're not even sure what that word idolatry means. Well, here's what idolatry is, just kind of in broad strokes. Idolatry is an unrestrained attachment to something. An attachment to something that is just out of control. It's when the things in our lives start to overshadow what is actually truly important, especially, and you know where I'm going with this, God. You see, after a while, our hobbies, our little obsessions, they can grow and grow to the point that they take on a kind of life of their own and become idols. When you start skipping worship to participate in certain activities to the point where you can't remember the last time you went to church, or if your credit card is bulging at the seams from all the clothes or the collectibles that you've purchased, when the details of wedding planning consume you to the point that you can't remember the last time you spoke to your fiancé about anything other than the wedding, you may have an idol. Now Jesus, he talked about this, and we've already heard it, but I'll say it again. He said this, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. What are your treasures? Showing you some of mine. What are yours? Where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, 
But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And this really is the big takeaway for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, church, the things that you most value reveal a lot about where your heart is with God. And we can pursue all kinds of stuff here on earth, a lot of fun stuff too, but Jesus actually reminds us that at the end of the day, those fancy clothes will be eaten by moths, and that new car in the driveway will be nothing but rust, which is why I collect toys, because plastic lasts forever. Actually, the only thing that will never turn to rust are the things of God. Love, compassion, kindness, the good news of Jesus Christ, these things can never be destroyed. Now, there is, uh, there's one thing I've been obsessing about lately, and, and you all know how much I love my truck, but there's another truck that's been on my heart lately. I know, I know, I feel guilty. Don't tell her, okay? But have you seen this thing? My, oh my, how beautiful is that? The new Ford Bronco with a turbocharged V6 engine. You can take the doors off, you can take the roof off, and you can boogie on down the highway wherever you want over any terrain. You can get something called the Sasquatch Package. That is a raised suspension and 35-inch tires from the factory. And I hear they're coming out with a version in two years with 37-inch tires, which, of course, I will need to take my kids to school. (laughs) They'll follow the truck, yeah. However, uh, when I did buy my truck, it was a seven-year loan, and my wife said that I am not allowed to buy a new truck until that seven-year loan has come to term. So, we'll see. (laughs) That's about three more years. We'll see. I'll wear it down. Don't you worry. But here's the thing. Let's say I do buy this truck next summer or the summer after, and I will be excited and I will talk about it, and I will be happy on that day. You could hit me with a shovel, and I would be happy on the day that I drive that thing off the lot. But what about the next day? Or the day after that? How long does that afterglow last? How long will this truck make me happy? My guess is right up until the day I get that first payment. Make that first payment. This is the trap of if I only had dot, 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 I will be happy. And, and sometimes it's not even stuff. It can be ideas. Like a girlfriend or boyfriend, if I only had one of those, I'd be happy. Or, or a spouse or the perfect job. There are things in our life that we simply fool ourselves into thinking will make us happy, and they won't. You see, living this dual life can make you mad. It can make you crazy. And we say that in Christ alone our hope is found. And yet we spend a lot of our lives chasing after hope or contentment or peace or joy in other things. This is a a duality that can make you crazy. And that's why Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And what does money buy you? But things. You can't, dear church, serve two masters. You just can't do it. There will always be something else. A new spouse, a new truck, a new house, 
a new toy. My, my father-in-law, who's amazing, he's been helping me redo our bathroom along with my, my dad and my mom who've been up here the past few days. And when he sold his house in Florida, he was really excited because he said, now that we no longer have to pay for this vacation home in Florida, I'm going to have all kinds of free money to spend up here. <laughs> Idiot. Oh, no, that didn't happen. But he did get to buy his dream weed whacker. No, really, it's the thing he wanted. Was this really nice, expensive weed whacker with this metal blade attachment, and it did all these things, and it was gas-powered, and he was so excited, he kept talking about it. And then I didn't hear anything about this weed whacker for a while. And I said, how's that new weed whacker? He said, it broke. It broke. They're trying to fix it, but it broke. He was just so excited. Moth and rust will ultimately take all of our worldly possessions, but there is one thing that you can always count on, and that is the love of God. So, here's the question. What do you love more than God? Okay, that, that might be a hard question to answer. But what in your life, if removed, would absolutely devastate you? Now, I'm not talking about your spouse. I'm not talking about your kids or anything like that. But what is the thing in your life that, if it just wasn't there anymore, you'd almost feel like you couldn't go on? And if there is such a thing... In that case, you might have an idol. Now, I posed this question to myself the other day as I was driving home from the church to Victoria Harbor, where I live. And and I'm thinking, okay, Alton, what's that one thing in your life? Like, if something were to be taken away from me, I know for my my son Sam, it's his switch, because he can't play Fortnite anymore with his friends. And by the way, we did take a switch away from him for the week. You may have heard about that already. Yeah, he was devastated. For me, the thing that came to my mind was my phone. My phone. I don't actually really like my phone a whole lot. Sometimes I kind of hate it. But I know that if I don't have it at my side at all times, if I, if I don't have contact with the outside world at all times at my fingertips... The information of the internet, Amazon Music, shopping, texting. If I don't have that, I'd panic. So I went home and I said to my wife, Nikki, "Um, I think we might have to try something here. I think we might need to put our phones away for an entire day and see if we survive. (laughs) And she agreed, maybe we should give it a try. Well... I'll let you guys know how that goes. Please pray for us. Now, today is a very special day because today we're going to be baptizing someone who has recently come into a knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it's been such a delight and it's been so exciting to be with her on this journey along with her husband. And, and God has been active in her life for many years now or many months now and in the life of her husband and, uh, and that's Lorna Crawford and, and Jerry Crawford. And, uh, and so today's a special day because we're going to be baptizing her and then admitting both of them into the membership of the church. And so, as is customary this week, and we talked about what baptism is and what it would look like, and the big thing we talked about is about how when we are baptized... We are publicly declaring the work of Jesus Christ in our lives and in the world. That he, that he died for our sins, that he rose again to new life. And in baptism, we declare that we too have died to sin and are raised again to new life. Admittedly, the image is a bit lessened in Presbyterian churches where we don't use full immersion but sprinkle water on the head. But the image is still there. And we also talked about how 
uh, just as the parted waters of the Red Sea declared God's lordship and salvation in Egypt, we today are declaring that Jesus is Lord and Savior. And the symbolic waters of baptism, they announce that he alone can quench the thirst of our souls. And so may this be a reminder today to all of us who have made this profession of faith. If we find ourselves slipping into that, if I only had thinking. That, dear church, we already have all that we need in Jesus Christ. For everything in this world, everything will eventually fade away. But the love of God is eternal. And therefore, if we have the love of God, so are we. Let us pray.